Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And after lots and lots and lots of requests from you people on explaining the topic of tithis, as many of you have mailed me in WhatsApp, and you have also told me when doing consultations that there's not much information on tithis. So finally, Anuradha ji is here with us again, and today she will explain the tithi of Pratipad with examples. So. Stay tuned and please subscribe to her channel also and she also does readings and I will also pin the link to her website in the description. So welcome and please share Pratipad with us. <laughs> Thank you so much Bhavajit. As I move on to Pratipad, I'd like to take a minute off to thank all of you out there for appreciating my series on Nakshatra. Since you've all appreciated the series on Nakshatra, the Tithi and one part, one sixteenth part of it that we are going to cover today is Pratipal. They all form a very big part of a very big base called Panchang. The Panchang, as the name suggests, is made up of five elements on which the entire astrology is based. The five elements are Tithi, Vara, Nakshatra, Yoga, and Karan. And I have a course coming up in October on this Panchang. This Panchang is a beautiful essence on which the entire basis of the knowing of the chart is based on. Without much information on the Panchang, if you delve directly in the chart, you will be losing out on a substantial amount of clues and predictive data. So, it is very important to study the panchang. The panchang is very predictive in nature. Like we have seen the nakshatras. Nobody knew that you could answer so much through the nakshatras. In fact, you can also answer so many dates and happenings right through the nakshatras. But that's for another series. Coming back to the tithi. Tithi is one of the five limbs of the pancha and it is the distance between the sun and the moon so when when i just go through a story that uh, of the sun and the moon here the moon had been cursed by king uh, you know daksh prajapati because he had offended his wives the 27 nakshatras and what he did was because he had not given them enough, Moon had not given them enough time, enough attention, did not love them enough. And he had kept all of it for his one wife, Rohini. So, Daksh Prajapati had insisted that he give all of them equal attention and time. However, Moon overlooked it and had to bear the consequences. What were the consequences? Daksh Prajapati, in all his anger, told him that from now on you will start debilitating or you will emancipate and you will lose your form. Now, when a man who is as beautiful, as handsome as Moon is told that he will lose his form, he knows that he will lose his essence and he will lose everything. So he was very, very perturbed. And then a lady's heart, we all know, is very soft. Okay, And the wives realize that Rohini realized her mistake. The wives, all the wives realized that if they lose their husband, they will have no, nothing. And he was very repentful. He went to them and he told them that, see, now I will definitely take care of you no matter what. Please save me. So the wives start pr praying. That is the 27 nakshatras. Those ladies, they start praying. But the curse, when given, once a curse is given, by anybody, through anybody, to anybody, the curse cannot be taken back. So my request to all of you is in our daily lives also we do tend to, you know, when we are very sad, very upset, we sometimes do curse. Please don't do that. It will have a major repercussion. When we come back to the story, what happens is these wives are praying day in and day out. So their prayers are reaching the sun. I had told you earlier when we were doing Ashwini Nakshatra that the, uh, there are 12 sun gods. 
who are born of Aditi, that is the mother goddess. Okay, and these twelve sun gods, then hear the voice of uh, the of the twenty seven nakshatras, and they tell her, tell them these twelve sun gods that together we will see to it when that when he is finally emancipated or he's finally lost his form, he merges into us. The moon merges into us, and then we will enrich him again with our powers, such that he is on his way out again. And slowly he would gather form. When he comes to our opposition, in on the way on his rounds to the you know in the solar system, when he comes to our, his of our opposition, he would be in full form. So on Purnima, when moon reaches one eighty degree. opposite sun he is in his full form you can see him in all his beauty and glory and then again he starts waning then as sun moves to a different rashi he would again come and be engulfed in that sun and lose all his form take power from that particular sun move ahead and this journey is a continuous journey so this is the story of the tithis now tithi is a it is technically if we take it it is a separation 12 degree separation between that of sun and moon that constitutes a tithi an exact 12 degree separation is a tithi another tithi that is the pratipada when the sun moves when the moon moves away 12 degrees from the sun it is called the pratipada another 12 degrees it is dvitiya this continues from the shukla paksh to the krishna paksh what is the shukla paksh the shukla paksh is when the moon moves starts moving away from the sun to its glory to purnima and krishna paksh is when it starts moving from the sun towards the sun after purnima when it starts moving towards the sun that entire phase of 15 days is known as krishna paksh this relationship between the sun and the moon constitutes a tithi and every tithi has its own set of parameters every tithi has a particular way of unfolding itself the reason why a person is born if the parameters are different the reason why a person would be born would also be different so let us see what the parameters are when we are talking about pratipada so what does the panchang mean the panchang has a way subtle meaning okay the the tithi means in the panchang the tithi gives wealth the vara or that is the big day gives longevity the nakshatra removes the sins the yoga cures the diseases and the karna which is half of a tithi we when i would do karna in my classes i would definitely be teaching karna and it gives success in the deeds that is done so one who does the karma by knowing the above will have divine blessings this is what is written in the shastras that is why every day during sandhya, sandhya vandana one is required to do sankalp wherein all the above five elements are recited for all those who do prayers okay you know when we have a big puja or a yagna at home we have to say that the person born in this place as and uh, in this century so in vikram samvat it is 2075 and you know uh, born on this month shukla pakshe krishna pakshe this tithi this uh, month and you know this yog this karan this nakshatra all that is to be decided so that you can absorb all the good from that particular day all the five elements operating on that particular day can bless you with the best of their abilities <clears throat> so let us see what the uh, what the you know 
texts classical texts have to say about a person who is born in pratipada mangsari chapter 1 says that a person born on pratipada will have associations with rose he will be poor and will bring disrepute to this family and get addicted to evil habits jatak bharna says that he will be scholarly and judgmental person who will be wealthy handsome and will bear good conduct Jatak Parijata predicts that the native will be industrious and virtuous. Hora Ratnam says the chapter two effects of Pradipala shloka number is also given for people who would like to read it there. One born on Padyami will live either for three days or three months. If he survives, he will be very effulgent. For obtaining longevity, remedial measures must should be resorted to. If the child passes critical phase of Tithi Gandha Anta, he will. obtain much prosperity what do you mean by titi gandanta it is a switch over from krishna paksh to shukla paksh or shukla paksh to krishna paksh so that zone you don't have gandanta only in nakshatra yes the titi is also a gandanta zone there are two gandanta zones it's either shukla paksh to krishna paksh or krishna paksh to shukla paksh in which purnima and ekam or pratipada and amavasya and Vatipada have their border. So let's see what the what are the parameters that govern the tithis. So like we have, uh, like we have in nakshatra a deity, there is a deity associated with the tithi also, and for Pratipada that tithi. That deity is Agni. For Dvitiya, it's Ashwini Kumar. So on and so forth. Okay. So the element, the five elements, we know that the Panch Mahabhut, and all these elements, like like Nakshatra is ruled by Akash element. Water is ruled by uh, water rules over Tithi element. So Tithi is essentially the meaning of relationships what are means what liquidity emotions so it rules over emotions in your life okay and planet is sun so like the seven planets plus rahu they represent something in your life this is the planet which is governing which you will be able to experience in the chart as we will be seeing in our uh, you know in our examples and nanda is the division so there are five divisions you know nanda bhadra rikta purna and um, jaya so they they are and they are not in the chronological order that i'm saying that but the five divisions so right from ekam to right from pratipada to panchami and then again from uh, shashti uh, to uh, ek uh, to dashami then ekadashi to Uh, amavasya or purnima this is one rotation each so three times in a cycle in half a cycle that is six times in total these divisions are repeated dag the rasis that's a very beautiful concept interesting concept because we have not we have covered deities in nakshatras we know what elements are and we know what planet is because that is essentially what we work on in astrology dag the rasis is a concept that is a new concept here Dagdarasis are concepts wherein we will know dagda means what something that is hurting you, that is burning. So anything that burns in your chart, okay, that is the area which causes much grief. So we come on to the dagdarasis, okay. What do you mean by dagdarasis? When something is burning within you, no. Okay. That is an area that needs. That could be an area that could be uh, a pulsating area that needs rectification. A that could be an area that causes much grief to you. B or an area that you would be required to improvise upon. So. when i take up the characteristics of element that is water it is intuitive it is emotional it is imaginative it is nurturing 
there is a lot of secrecy in water what goes in water stays there it is not revealed to anybody on the outside the water you know people are always floating around so you know it's a dreamy state to be in and uh, like water a uh, like um, like fire which spreads and indiscriminately water can be contained and it so mean that means it is introvert so all the water signs that we know they are very introvert so it is introvert and water has a very therapeutic quality it is very healing so these part which form the essence of atithi so of your relationship you know it is through your relationships that you are liberated you are healed at the same time if it is if we will see the L, venus which stands for your element okay uh, because it's a water element of the five elements we know jupiter is the akash mars is the fire saturn is the air mercury is the earth and venus is the water element so venus as we know is if there is a distorted venus in your chart or if venus happens to be uh, afflicted then we will see that the sustenance of relationships can be very difficult or it can be very clogging in the sense relationships can be very claustrophobic i mean for people it can be very clogging they can feel very bound down very burdened with relationships then we have the sun so sun is the planet all the characteristics it is about mental purity it is about freedom from disease sun represents your gems it is the lord of the sky the biggest planet that you see so we will see where sun is placed for a particular person born on pratipada and we will ascertain as to what the person will show as characteristics okay he, he this person may not be very tall in stature it is the power sun is essentially i keep repeating and i would do it every time that sun is the the most important planet in our in our part of the solar system for us in astrology it is the biggest planet so it is par okay it is very intense we know that jatayu he went near the sun and he his wings were absolutely he was uh, uh, sampati and jatayu sampati got killed and jatayu his he lost his uh, uh, ability to fly so sun is very fierce a planet so that is why it's called a crur planet it is not cruel it is crur that means it is so strong that anything in its path it can override and it is it is the heat but it is also splendor wherever sun sits it gives a lot of energy it gives a lot of um, shares a lot of uh, vibrancy around it it is fire and it is the worship of lord shiva technically it is said that on sunday if you worship lord shiva you gain much from it okay but don't worship anybody for gaining things worship people because it is important be worship god not people worship the deities because when you give them certain power of yours they remound it in multifold and sun gives you a lot of courage division is nanda so what does nanda mean it means somebody who is happy somebody who is uh, full of pleasure so because the person is born on pradipada the person would show these inherent qualities also of happiness of entertainment of art you know th this is a time one would get a lot of ornaments should get ornaments made uh, on a pradipada if you want it to flourish more in your life this is the time when you socialize on a pratipada and you start a new work this is also time that you make homes that would give you happiness now libra what is what are the characteristics of libra it's a dagda rasi so the character we know essentially it's marriage conjugal bliss association with the outside world so that it's the seventh house of the natural zodiac and as such that is the area when a person comes from within the first sixth house is your personal zone and the next sixth house six houses is your 
private zone. Uh, sorry, it's your yes. <laughs> start कर दे recording. हाँ, we started. So um, okay. So uh, the first six houses relate to your association with the outside world, uh, inside world that is your personal territory. And the next six houses, from the seventh through the twelfth, is your association with the outside world. Okay. So it is your the Libra being the seventh house of the natural zodiac is the first house which shows your association with the outside world. It is all about partnerships, commercial partnerships. thought processes because it is the self airy house it is about proving one's own individuality and it is also to do with speech because again an air element element there we know the balancing factor comes into account because what is the sign of the libra it is the sign of the libra are the two it's the balance is the lady holding the balance so it's a zero balance sign that comes into uh, you know a person who has libra which is not everybody will have a libra sign first and foremost and two not everybody um, what i mean to say is the very few people who will we will see are born in the sign of the libra these people will have the ability to balance things in life and if there is a planet in libra which for you any one of you which is either afflicted or a very strong planet that zone of your life could show a lot of problems mm -hmm. and it is a creative process it these people are always seeing the pros and the cons should i should i not they are always balancing things in life the second that the rashi associated with pratipada is capricorn it's one of the most practical signs of the uh, you know the zodiac system they are very methodical ruled being ruled by sun uh, by saturn they give a person a very scientific and systematic approach and they are very result oriented they have a goal in mind sometimes you will see a lot of laziness associated with this uh, with this you know sign but please don't be uh, you know uh, uh, be under the impression that they are not working their minds are working at a supersonic speed and they are very ambitious they are self willed if there is something within them that propels them into the orbit that is something that they will go for and they will do it 100% they are hard working and productive so they may appear to be lazy but their mind is working as i said on a very supersonic level and they once they are into the orbit when they once they are into the zone of doing something through their own will nothing stopping them on the flip side they can be saturn is supposed to be very gloomy okay so on the flip side flip side they can show a lot of pessimism or uh, gloominess if this nakshatra if this uh, so used to talking uh, about nakshatras all the time so if this uh, if this sign is so much of afflicted and they can be very miserly unyielding and rigid and very self centered Mm, miserly because they were penny pinching people you know but they they are they are born accountants so it's not just money that they are talking about any resource anywhere you know wherever the sign falls in your uh, chart that is an area where you are very very practical about in life that is an area where you are very conservative about in life that is an area where you will just check it out how do i spend my resources here how do i maximize my opportunities here how do i uh, without doing a lot how can i achieve much more in this area that's the beauty of capricorn we come back to the dagda rasi you know the capricorn here is the dagda rasi and so we will see how it affects a pratipada nakshatra person the deity so this is agni so we've uh, agni is also the deity of kritika nakshatra agni is uh, fire and we will uh, so there's a lot of association even between these five uh, parts of the panchang there's a lot of common ground 
So we have seen how this deity will actually, uh, you know, when you, if anybody has done my nakshatra course, they would, they would know what the essence of this deity is or any other nakshatra course for that matter. We know what the essence of this deity is. I've just got it down to a few form, uh, you know, a few words. This deity shows it is a purifier. It is a transformer because whatever Yagni takes, it does not take for itself. You know, it passes it on. And it, anything that I sh throw, any, you know, when you give the Ahuti in the Agni, it transports that Ahuti to the other gods. Okay, and it is ambitious. It is forward moving. It is, Agni is the leader. It is like Indra, it is also one of the leaders. Okay, and it is a purifier. So whenever you have a Havan of the Yagna at your place, there is smoke that comes out of the Agni. It is said that you should allow it to move into all corners of your house to purify because Agni is a purifier. This smoke purifies all uh, the corners of your house and it gets rid of anything that is unwanted, the negative energy are very well get gotten rid of. Agni is also licentious. That means Agni has a very strong desire for other women, which created a lot of problem in his marriage also. And it also brought about his downfall. From becoming, from being the, uh, the you know, the Vedic Agni, that is the, it was the celestial fire, the fire of the Vedas, it moved into the griha, Garbha griha, that it moved into the kitchens of people. And it is uh, just to, you know, when Agni could then have a good look, could have a good feel of the people working in the kitchens, especially the ladies of the, um, uh, and when I'm talking, I'm talking about the ladies of the Saptarishis. Yes. Okay. So uh, he, uh, you know, all the seven ladies, they were very much appreciated by him. He wanted to uh, have relationship with them, but he could not. So because when he saw them sitting with their husbands doing the yagna, he fell for them. And then he moved into the fire as the house fire in their house and did in, uh, you know, did try to have a relationship with them and so on and so forth. The stories are galore. But we'll just get them to the point here. He's a good connector. Agni is a good negotiator. As I told you, it connects two parties. So um, anybody who work, does a work on a Pratipada, especially the second half of Pratipada, not the first half, then in that case, the person will have the ability to be able to negotiate and guide people. Okay. Okay, so and let's not forget sun. Sun is associated with it. So there's strong motivation, strong guide, strong ability to do things. So we move on to Shukla Pratipada. Now we come to a concept called the Nityas. Okay, so the Nityas, they are, they are 15 in number. Okay, and these are the deities, these are the female powers. Of, and they're part of the bigger power, Tripura Sundari, who is said to rule the universe in the Maya form. So when we're talking about the Advait, when we're talking about well, the creator has, when he, it takes a female form, okay? It is about the Tripura Sundari, which holds all the powers of the universe. The creative part. And she cannot be seen in the, the movement of the, um, she cannot be seen in the movement of the moon, but however, her, uh, her uh, parts thereof are seen. See, I have to, I have a huge uh, chapter just on Nityas, but we cannot uh, go into much details. We know that there are two nityas associated with every tithi. One associated with the Shukla Paksh and the other associated with the Krishna Paksh. This, these are the paths, the very basis, the very par that we did when we would do nakshatras. We had a par associated with a tithi, right? Yeah, with a nakshatra. Similarly, there is a par associated with the tithi. And that is nitya. 
एंड इनहेरेंट क्वालिटी ऑफ अतिथि शुक्ल पक्ष प्रतिपदा इज दैट इफ समबडी वर्शिप कामेश्वरी नित्या दैट इज यू डू वर्शिप द कामेश्वरी रूप और द फॉर्म ऑफ त्रिपुरा सुंदरी इन दैट केस वॉट हैपन्स वॉट यू गेट इज हैपीनेस वेल्थ फैमिली कंजीनियलिटी मेंटल पीस एंड योर सोल ऑल्सो मे गेट लिबरेटेड बाय डिस्ट्रॉइंग डिजीजेस शी प्रोटेक्ट द मैन काइंड विथ गुड हेल्थ when we will do um when we will do krishna paksha we will see another form associated with that nitya or nitya associated with krishna paksha now let me come to my example of shukla pratipada harrison ford all of us know that harrison ford is a well known actor american actor director writer and film producer he gained worldwide fame for his roles in star wars uh, films and then indiana jones made him very very famous five of his movies are within the top 30 grossing movies of all times at the us box office when adjusted for inflammation inflation you know so he is a very highly paid actor and uh, he is also a very known actor because of his very many movies very many movies and his dialogue delivery speech delivery impeccable his career spans 6 decades and includes roles in several hollywood busters as of 2016 the us domestic, domestic box office grosses of ford's films total over 4.7 billion dollars with worldwide grosses surpassing 6 billion dollars okay so that is the amount that he has earned through his movies making for the second highest grossing us domestic box office star at the moment he is married to kalista flockhart but he has had three marriages ahead of him and he from his marriage he's had um from his marriage he has had five if i'm not mistaken five or six children okay so now let us move on to one by one tithi deity we did tithi deity was agni agni ha we'll move on to sun tithi planet okay tithi planet where is sun posited i told you we'll take up where the tithi planet is posited uh -huh. tithi planet sun is posited in his 10th house of career and profession and it is the 12th floor of international fame indiana jones gave him it's it's about archaeology okay and indiana jones gave him a boost in archaeology and as an actor it gave him a huge huge platform Indiana Jones related him to archaeology and he since then being a part of AIA okay which is an american institute of archaeology is been promoting to safeguard those very artifacts that you know the AIA unearths or has been spreading the word about AIA and it's so many things because when you have a celebrity associated with your organization it goes a long way in promoting it and Uh, for people to uh, sit back and take notice about it so he's been doing all those things and he has the lagna lord is also placed with the sun again in the 10th house we know that sun gets digbali in the 10th house jupiter is associated with the sun and jupiter is again the seventh lord of secondary house of profession so all these things gave him such a strong career because you know what he was he had it was not till his children were born from the first marriage you know and they were small children so he in spite of trying time and time again we will see it when we do the tithi agni because transformative and he had uh, his children were just born and they were growing up and yet his career as an actor was not taking off So what did he do? He started working with his hands, and he uh, 
he was a carpenter he became a carpenter just to sustain his family lots that he's gone through in life okay uh, to become what he is today but sun gave him the power to sustain agni gave him the desire to move forward to transform and agni became the ambition associated so we have to see what the tithi has to offer for him okay and he has a huge amount of he has respect for these ancestral craftsmanship and he's a lot of things that he can do and he's uh, working as a for the cause of these uh, things nanda tithi he was born in pratipada he has nanda tithi which creates problems with relationship he is said to be one of the most circumspect kind of an actor he does not open his mouth about his relationship he says that they are private and they should really remain private what i do is my profession that is open for all to see and he's had he's had three or four marriages the fourth one with uh, kalista frockhart that is the sustaining marriage when they he adopted he adopted her adopted son also okay now let us check out because the element venus where does the venus sit in his chart venus in his chart sits in the ninth house and it's sitting right there in his own house right if you see venus you will see that venus for him is sitting right here in his own house and uh, and it is sitting with saturn so saturn is the par saturn is again the fifth lord of masses a uh, fifth lord sorry fifth lord of um, uh, power fifth lord of uh, prestige and everything and it's sitting with the ninth lord it's a beautiful combination but then it's sitting in the earthy house so venus says i define my territory my relationships are something which is very private earthy houses have a they have a they very territorial they they very definite within boundaries my private life within my boundaries not to be encroached by anybody okay and he it was after his marriage after his children were born that is venus is also the second lord of family so is after his marriage after his children were born that he started to show an increase in the ninth house that is luck started to move ahead for him and when we come to the dagda rasi okay it's a shukla paksh pratipada in my very small observation i have seen that the dagda rashis do not affect the shukla paksh as much as they affect the krishna paksh i could be very wrong and that's very much open to but in the last you know one year one and a half years that i've worked with dagda rashis in depth i have seen that the shukla paksh is not that very affected as a krishna paksh krishna paksh is very affected with that the rashis so we will have a look at libra and capricorn second house of family libra for him is the second house of family second house of ethics second house of morals second house of education wealth and food okay and capricorn is the fifth lord of power position prestige children intelligence its artistic talents recreation and applied intelligence so his two sons from his foot first marriage do not follow his foot's footstep you know they count on him they tell that he is an inspiration in their own right in his own right so uh, they count on him as an inspiration but they do not follow his footstep only his daughter from uh, georgia ford okay so she is a daughter who has followed his footstep but unfortunately the dagdarasi principle applying on his fifth house that is that this daughter who is an actress has epilepsy oh okay and saturn is sitting with the emotional content of 
that is element that is venus so he is emotional however about his children but he is very tight lipped about it he does not open it up okay then we give tithi rash deity agni it it is gives him an at this age also he is very active he is the highly energetic and it gives him the ability to influence others he has influenced so many people with his uh, with his work with his um, you know hardships that he's faced in so many things now let us go back to what the nitya is the nitya is the kameshwari nitya that is the part of the tithi that is the underlying base of the tithi and it says that she bestows liberation by satisfying desires providing health safety happiness wealth and peace of mind a very balanced person harrison ford has been able to get all this in life due to the power and the blessing of this nitya known as kameshwari nitya so in this i have dealt in detail as to what every tithi would constitute and how it can help you understand the main focus the life path of a person as to why a person is born so tithi is one of the major reasons that will pinpoint you as i said it is the distance between the sun and the moon and it pinpoints you as to the major reason why you are born when we take into account the planet associated the placement of the um, you know the element association when we take all these things into account we will be able to understand how a person comes into being why a person comes into being and what is the journey that he has to over you know take in this lifetime so in my past life readings when i'm doing this i always take the tithi into account okay krishna pratipada so we have another example and uh, before we move into the example the nitya that is associated with krishna pratipada is chitra nitya or vichitra nitya that it can be worked on it can be she can be called called by both the names so she gives the practitioner the part to convince others chitra grants wealth and self knowledge that's the atma bala you know the ability to understand yourself and she gives a person ability to get others to think on their way of thinking she shares the dear devotee with certain riches like treasure traps lottery etc this is an interesting example one of a very beautiful ladies okay of yesterday years she held her own ground in an era where there was so much manpower around today we are living in a very liberated comparatively liberated society but in an era where there was so much manpower around she elizabeth taylor made her mark not just made her mark she was one of those ladies who was able to establish her own companies we'll see that dame elizabeth rosemond taylor was a british born american actress business woman and humanitarian she began a career as a child actress in the early 1940s and was one of the most popular stars of the classical hollywood cinema in the 1950s she continued her career successfully in the 60s and remained a well known figure for the rest of her life in 1999 the american film institute named her the seventh greatest female legend born in london to wealthy social uh, prominent american parents taylor moved with her family to los angeles in 1939 and she was soon given a film contract by universal pictures <coughs> she was known as an actress very beautiful performances uh, one of her beautiful movies cat on a hot tin roof i mean you see cleopatra lot of movies lot of movies she looks stunning in cleopatra so um, she has the grace the beauty the arrogance everything just comes out on screen okay but she's also well known for her eight marriages 
okay and two to richard burton in particular they do a large amount of media uh, attention public uh, disapproval there was a time when she was married to richard burton both of them were like living like royalties every single moment of their life was just screenshot kind of thing and as we see venus her venus is the element that i talk about when we are talking about uh, relationships okay it's exalted it's in the it's in pisces which is a watery element so there's a lot of emotions involved but it's with rahu so rahu craves a lot of emotions and there's a never ending cra craving for emotions there's a never ending because it's a fifth house it's a never ending cra uh, uh, craving for uh, limelight love power celebrityhood there's a never ending uh, need to be in control so all this kind of brought her to be on constant search for love and affection so we see the element here is though exalted it is distorted and is the seventh lord of has <coughs> the seventh lord of spouse is the seventh lord of uh, association with uh, the outside world it's the seventh lord of internet uh, of your professional life also so every person that she made uh, married you know in process was related to her professional field and taylor was the first celebrity to create her own collection of fragrances now it's nowadays it's very uh, you know it's nowadays it's very common to have celebrities who create fragrances but say taylor elizabeth taylor in her time with elizabeth arden inc okay Uh, that is a that is a company she created launching two of her best selling perf uh, pers uh, perfumes that are passion and white diamond and they said to garner more resources for her in terms of uh, money than all her big movies together so venus is also a high end product okay and it's a luxurious product so that bought her the so much of uh, so much of uh, so much of money for her an international fame she also found a jewelry company for all those who do not know elizabeth taylor had owned one of the richest collection of jewelry in her lifetime you know huge rocks what they call diamonds in the us huge rocks and of and jewelry of all sorts so she was born on pratipada she is a nanda tithi which is nanda tithi creates problems in relationship she was always in search of this elusive relationship libra 12th house we the what we talked about dagda rasis so there are two dagda rasis that capricorn and libra associated with it so libra is the 12th house of bad pleasures international name and fame and international travel rehabilitation she has been out on in and out of rehabilitations for her drug and uh, this abuse alcohol abuse okay and she's been known to be very charitable she's uh, she has been known to give to charity even in uh, you know aids in for aids research she was bold enough to come forward and say that i want to donate money for aids research we know that libra houses moon which is the ninth lord and the legality of marriage so you see her marriages were a sore point like i told you it's a krishna pratipada so we see a lot of afflictions in krishna pratipada and it's also the 12th house of bed pleasures she's had numerous affairs with even the eight of her marriages and the the lord venus goes into the fifth house of affairs with rahu cementing that fact of craving of of uh, you know problems in marriages and affairs she said to be on on and off alcohols and addictions to pills capricorn is the third house of journeys anger aggression forcefulness of character and also happiness of marriage she was an extremely volatile person 
she had a huge character you know beautiful character but it always needed a forefront third house capricorn for her is also the bhagya of marriage and she had problems in a marriage third house also says health issues she had if you read on wikipedia you would be able to see that the amount of health issues that she uh, she suffered from was not something very uh, to be taken very lightly so we know that uh, krishna pratipada again the deity is agni in spite of all that she had a fire a spark till the time she died she had a spark in her to do to keep doing things and she was one of the richest late she is always on the verge of doing transforming getting new things in life and she was always excited as a small child to try anything new which is the leadership quality that agni imparts she however had issues with sexuality and affairs that's one thing that was always documented about her where is sun placed sun is placed in the fourth house what does fourth house it's the 10th lord 10th lord means again we've seen 10th lord is all about career 10th lord is all about uh, honor name and fame and it represents your your ability to be far reaching but 10th house lord is sitting in the fourth house of masses and throne so she was actually put in a on a pedestal by the masses and it's aspecting its own house so it's giving its own house a lot of strength and she was able to garner a lot of wealth through her career that's an real estate fourth house is also all about real estate now the nitya or the part of this tithi the underlining part is chitra nitya or vichitra nitya it gives a person wealth and self knowledge the atma bal the ability the confidence to move and do things on her own in spite see no matter what she was she had to go through eight marriages and she, every one of them must have broken her taken a part of her away but she still stood up ready to fight a battle again for the next coming day okay and she shares the devotee with certain riches like treasure traps lotteries etc she this lady is in spite of having gone through a lot in life in terms of relationships and all she is an example that a woman on her own can also achieve a lot so this brings an end to my um, you know pratipada series so that this is what i have on tithis as such you know fantastic it was it was a different insight i mean we always knew about the dagda rashis but we never knew that it actually works and uh, it works this way <laughs> shishatri ayer has given a very beautiful way and how to uh, you know work on dagda rashis and how they affect so uh, from his um, his way of working on them and then you realize it's relating to each nakshatra each uh, tithi the dagda rashis will differ as i said each tithi will have a different set of parameters that is why each tithi person born on each tithi will have a different life goal like we saw in case of harrison ford life goal was 10th house sun was sitting there in her it was the 4th house and the 10th house connected because the 10th house was sitting in the 4th house so she had so many children and she you know, she was survived by them but masses she enamored the masses she was sitting on a throne she set an example to others so atithi will have a lot of uh, things to talk about yeah and the interesting thing is that it is not only talking about relationships it's talking about so many other areas although people only think that oh it is only speaking on relationships and if that lord is badly placed then oh it's over it's finished or something like that but here we see that it is affecting the whole chart i mean you have shown very nicely how it's happening <laughs> uh tithi has as i said thank you bhaji for uh, you know pointing it out it has so many parameters so like i told you people about nakshatra had so many parameters so does a tithi so it does not only mean the element of relationship it also means as many the planet where it is sitting so wherever the planet is sitting how it operates how and then what is the year that the planet will 
that's something for in depth okay what is the year that planet will give a result okay so when we do uh, vara we will also see hora so in in the panchang it's a six months course and it's vast and but when you know it you you practically know most of astrology then we know how to see a chart <laughs> then we know then we begin to see a chart then we begin to see a chart otherwise everybody just opens so i get messages oh my saturn is in third house fourth house what's going to happen <laughs> <laughs> what if saturn is your day lord or tithi lord then the story is completely different the way it's acting yes yes <laughs> extremely so well, see this is a very detailed this is a very detailed one that i've carried of uh, you know on your channel but i do plan to take up certain just a few aspects uh, on a continuum basis on my channel also and see you know how i can develop it further uh, but it's it's fun working with uh, with this aspect of astrology pithi because it i you see we we were able to get so much out of a chart without looking into any other thing yeah i didn't look into nakshatras i didn't look into rashis i didn't look into other planets sitting there nothing just the pithi and its elements and we got yeah, so much this is one of my strong beliefs from the day one that although they say that even james brahart said his guru once said that when you make a mixture i don't remember i'm paraphrasing but it's like tea ha he said tea is made with so many things it is not only one yes. thing but yeah. apart from that i always feel that if somebody is actually knowledgeable and somebody can have deep experience and knowledge of the scriptures so then i always feel that apart from seeing the whole chart that will ultimately give the final result but we should also be able to use one aspect of astrology and also yes. be able to pinpoint at least the major areas achievements or flaws major ones at least like we yes. may not be able to say that oh because somebody is born on pratipada somebody like elizabeth taylor may may like chocolates or may like this or that but something major we should be able to pin pinpoint because if that because every aspect will have their weightage and exactly. they will contribute so the to the life part Yeah, so the life path that we want yes. to find, because most of us are lost. Honestly speaking, most of us who come to astrology are lost. We do not know what the life path is. Are we doing the right thing? Are we following what is there for us? So these things help us understand our life path. Don't be very, uh, don't be very. Um, in Hindi, we have a word, rudi baat. Uh huh. That is, don't, don't be very. on the uh, you know very um, i am failing to get an english word for it dogmatic. don't be just stuck in the rut excuse me dogmatic dogmatic don't be thank you 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 can't be dogmatic but understand where you want to where you are going to be led and that will clear up a lot of issues in your life because those paths will open up on their own yeah and this is the thing i like very much that okay this person is born in this city this story and this dagda rashi so because of this 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 happened so next when we do vara we can use the same thing and only by using vara we can show that this is there because as i said that the whole whole chart is there but even that will individually have the power like one of the elements to show the major ups and downs in one's life absolutely bang on bhava ji because what happens is that the vara okay every as i have repeated even on your channel in my classes i do that in my class in my channel i do that i will tell you one thing that the vara will definitely tell you or vara or any other element if there's some cause very major cause your life path is a very huge thing for you so at every instance the universe is throwing you know things on you on your path to uh, to a certain that yes to acknowledge yes now i have found my life path i need to move along this line so life path is a very very important path so any element you pick up you pick up a planet you pick up uh, you know the placements of planets you pick up nakshatras you pick up the placement of moon in a particular nakshatra you pick up your vara you pick up your tithi they should be able to all the lower roads should guide you to to the same road yes it's like a vector that all things merge and it goes one direction right yes 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 nice. coming from uh, engineer that's a good one 
the vector 3d <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Fantastic it was and I'll upload it. Maybe today is a Pratipad and then maybe they are seeing this on a Pratipad. So maybe next we can do next. What do you want to do? We'll see. We'll, we'll work it out. Let us see the reaction because my Nakshatra series is definitely on with you. So we'll see the reaction. If people want more, we definitely come back with this. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much once again. And yes, before we end that she has a beautiful channel. You can go there and she also does readings. Once again, I'm reiterating it and you can, I will in the details in the description and you can also go to her if you want reading and subscribe to her channel. She has amazing videos. And now we have started the Rahu series, I guess. <laughs> the Rahu series was, and then uh, again, I have this course on Panchang coming up. It's a serious course, but for those who do not have time, I always send the videos, the link to the videos and the study material. Okay. You have that in, uh, when is it? It's in October. Okay. Okay. And if they want to register, how can they register? They will... There is a link there on my website for it. Ah, okay. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much then. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Papaji. Yeah.